Hi, my name is Paul Stork. I'm the owner and principal architect at Don't Panic Consulting. Have you ever opened the app launcher in Office 365 and been completely intimidated by the number of icons that are there? Do you know what all those icons do? Most users don't. What most people do is they focus in on the few icons that they recognize, the couple of applications that they use most frequently. The problem is Microsoft keeps expanding the number of icons that are available, the number of applications. And some of the newer applications seem to conflict with some of the older applications. But people keep using the ones that they're familiar with. I'm going to be offering a workshop in Chicago, a half-day workshop, that hopefully will help you make some sense out of all those app icons in the app launcher. If we take a look at the app launcher, we see that they start with some fairly familiar ones. First off, you've got the mail, calendar, people, and tasks apps that are part of Outlook Web Access for email. Then there are the Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and OneNote apps that are the web versions of typical Office applications. Then come the apps that we expect to have in Office 365, SharePoint, OneDrive, Yammer, and Delve. And finally, there are the apps that a lot of users don't see, the administrative apps like the Admin Center and the Security and Compliance Center and Dynamics 365. And then, of course, there's the store. But that still leaves several icons down there in the app launcher that you may or may not have experienced before. And as I said, worse yet, some of them conflict with other applications that you may already be using. For example, there's Teams, and then there's Yammer, and there's Office Groups. They're all used for communicating and collaborating with other people. But which one is the right one to use? A lot of people use Yammer because they've used it for a long time. Some people jump on Teams because it's the new one. Office 365 Groups are one of the key building blocks in Office 365. And so a lot of people want to know what that one does. But it doesn't stop there. Because then you also have the Forms app, the Power Apps, and Flow. Forms is a new entry that provides you with the ability to create forms and capture information from your users. But you can also do that with Power Apps. And then you can use Flow to actually do workflows on some of the data that you capture. So which one should you use? And then there's video and stream. Both of them are used to stream video. So why are there two? What's the difference? When should I use one versus the other? Then there's the planner app that seems to be an alternative to use for the tasks pane that's in Office Outlook web apps. And finally, we've got Sway which seems to be another way to do presentations. But why wouldn't I just use PowerPoint? These apps tend to be very confusing to a lot of users. And in my workshop, what we're going to do is go through each of these apps and take a look at them in a bit more depth. First, we'll do a demo of each application so that you get a feel for what the user experience is when you're using them. Second, we'll discuss the specific business case and why you should use one of these versus another for specific reasons around specific business uses. And then finally, we'll take a look at what the administrative controls are that are available for managing and controlling the use of each of these applications. When we're done with the workshop, you should have a good handle on all of the icons that are available in Office 365 not just the popular ones, so that you can go back to your user community, manage those applications, and have people using the right apps for the right purposes. Hope to see you at the workshop in Chicago. Bye.